Hi everyone and welcome back to my watercolour channel. In this video I'm going to take a virtual painting trip to Portugal but not the Portugal you might be picturing. In this one I'm going to be painting snow, uh, yeah, yeah, snow in the Serra da Estrela. And when you think of Portugal you think of a warmer climate, the coast, beaches, holiday destination, the rivers and yes mountains. So a bit of an unusual this one with this snowy scene. The challenge we, challenge we got with this one is, well, first of all, the snow. And of course, snow isn't white. Uh, we've got lots of, the more you look at this scene, the more things you see going on as regards to the snow and different colors appearing. I reckon the light is coming towards us. Maybe we're looking in a sort of southerly direction. The snow is quite bright in the distance, but just going back to the colours, I, the more I look at it, I can see different cools and warms appearing. I see, I don't, I don't know whether you see this, but I see a bit of warmth or a yellow in the foreground here. Then some cooler colours uh, in, in the distance there. So when we're looking at, when we're painting snow, uh, just think of any subtle colours that we can inject into the scene and take off the, the white of the paper. Next, edges, edges, edges. So there's a bit of disturbance in the snow here. We've got lots of little hard edges appearing. Obviously there's the hard edge where we hit the stream. Um, then in the distance, we've got some softer edges. Look at the, that soft edge there, a little bit of darkness and a little bit of lightness. There's a bit of um, a, a lump or something like that. Uh, just underneath the snow, and then again, harder edges as we come up, when we meet the tree trunks, harder edges in the distance. So, color, snow, color, think of the color, and those edges, soft edges, hard edges. Now, the next one, trees. Trees in abundance. We're in the middle of a forest here. We've got this nearby tree. I reckon it's a silver birch or some sort of birch tree. Um, as indeed most of them are, they've got a similar sort of markings on their bark. But we want to try and get a sense of distance with the placement of these trees, the base of those trees. Going into the distance and then getting a little bit lighter in the distance as well, thinking of the values of, of that distance. But going back to the challenges, the complexity of all of these trunks and branches and twigs. For example, again, the more you look at this scene, when I zoom in, how on earth do you paint all that in watercolour? Well, uh, the trick is not to zoom in too much. I think sometimes when you look at a photo, uh, it's a good idea to actually have a very small size image to look at. Then you're not really focusing on the details. You're not getting confused with all the details and the complexity. So zoom out, have a small sized image, maybe just uh, a few centimeters, um, an inch by two inch, something like that. So that's gonna be another challenge, trying to depict all of the trees and getting a sense of distance. Third, this winding winter stream. It's got some lovely edges to it, the size of the stream. There's a little bit of the bank being exposed there with the snow. We have to capture that and the nice feeling of the the snow sort of billowing over the edge, um, just to that, that kind of vertical bank there. But the stream itself, trying to depict a gentle flow of the water and some soft reflections, for example, for example, that little lump of snow there and that bit of softer reflection. And also that reflection is a little bit darker than the actual snow above it. Getting a sense of that, that movement then and those soft reflections. Values, I've sort of touched on values already. Where can I, where can I show you the darkest parts of the, of the scene? Well, probably though back to those reflections, they're pretty dark in there, if I zoom in there. Well, it's almost black, isn't it? I mean, on the, on the kind of value scales, that's got to be up there as, as, the, as regards. Uh, one of the darks, and then the lights, we zoom back out, the lights, well, maybe on 
the upper surface of that snow there, or the distance there, that's almost, if I zoom in there, zoom in here, if I can, that, that there is almost pure white, isn't it? But obviously as we come back, we see again these, these slightly darker values and, and colours um, materialising. There's a little bit of, I remember a bit of yellow there and purple there, something like that. Anyway, I'm going to go through the complete painting process with you. Start to finish the drawing, uh, the laying down the wash, getting in the, the, the darker values, getting in the details of the twigs and little little patches of snow on the branches and so on. Thanks to, before I start, thanks to one of my fellow Patreon members, Rosa, for the kind sharing of her image and uh, yeah, really unusual snowy scene in Portugal. Anyway, let's get started with the painting. Well, of course, for me, the initial step is getting in an outline drawing of the scene. I haven't done a thumbnail sketch. I'm just going straight into it. I'm sort of imagining on my scary blank piece of paper the, the scene in front of me. This is going to be quite a simple drawing. I'm going to really get in the main shapes of the areas of the snow. Of course, the winter stream, the stream going away from us as it sort of eddies around these different bends, then down this right hand side here. Get that right as well. Um, little bit of a bumpy edge to it as well, just accentuate some of those bumps, not make it too perfect and too, too straight. And then this major tree on the right hand side. I did think about that tree. Is it too, is it too strong in the composition? And well, I thought about it a lot and I'm just going for it basically and keep it roughly where it is in the scene. There is a smaller tree to, in the source for there's a smaller tree to the left, which I think doesn't do much for the composition. It just, it looks a little bit confusing. It looks like a tree that is maybe diseased or lost a few of its limbs and it's just in the wrong place. It's sort of hiding the middle of the river. So I'll just keep that major one, the birch tree, I think they're birch trees, on, on that right hand side. And there's that little sort of ridge of the initial patch of snow beyond the stream. The edge of the stream, a few little darker bits. I've done, done a bit of Done a bit of cross hatching there just to indicate when I come to the painting stage that's going to be dark. So I can go over that with darker, thicker paint, and that will hide those pencil marks. That's the little slopey bit of the snow coming down to the stream. The dark little, this dark band of the riverbank on the far side. Again, a bit of cross hatching there. Um, pencil I'm using, by the way, is an HB pencil, which is actually surprisingly quite dark. Hopefully you can still, hopefully it's still coming up the, the pencil lines for you so you can see what I'm doing. Now, on the left-hand side, just an indication of the distance. I can just about make out the tree line. The, the lie of the land, it's sort of sloping down from the left, of course, down to the river, and then it slopes up a little bit to the right. So there is a bit of a, this stream is in a little bit of, bit of a gradient here. So yeah, that's it with the initial drawing. Now to start the whole painting process off, I'm going to dampen the paper. 
I'm using a this is a Spontex sponge, I think it is. Quite quite a good sponge, fairly soft. Of course, there's lots of uh, different soft sponges, these natural sponges that are that are equally as good. Just to quickly dampen that surface, because we're going to be painting wet in, wet here. And the objective is to cover most, most of the scene with some sort of underlying colour. Now, the mop brush I'm using is a Tintoretto size 6 synthetic mop brush, series 1407. I'm just laying some of the base colour of the snow as I see it. I mentioned in the intro some of the warmer colours in the foreground and then those cooler colours just going into that middle ground and to the distance. So just taking that white colour off of the paper and injecting a little bit of some interesting varied colours and there's a little bit of a cool blue in there as well, just mix it all up. Leaving, because I went over fairly quickly with the wet sponge, it did actually leave a few little dry spots. Here's a bit of lavender, a bit of burnt sienna to the background trees with. I'm keeping the sky almost, um, well, fairly light actually. So just a very, very light wash just to take the, the white of the paper off because it's not actually, you can just about see a little bit of the sky in the, in the in the composition, not too much, just sort of the top 10% really. And so just gotta take the the dullness off the paper, a little bit of this yellow ochre, burnt sienna, lavender. Um, colors I'm using, the, the uh, paints are from Mark Chapman in the UK, Jackman's Art Materials, uh, not to be confused with Jack Sons, in the UK, so this is Jack Mann's art materials. And Mark makes a really nice range of handmade, professional grade watercolor paints at uh, very affordable prices compared to the competition, in my opinion. Um, and uh, some of the pigments are fantastic. I mean, I use his cobalt blue, and that is really stunning, uh, cobalt blue. Anyway, let that dry, fast forward, let that dry. Paper I'm using is Saunders Waterford. I recommend using good quality paper like Saunders Waterford. If you're using paper that's not 100% cotton, in my opinion, you, you will suffer from maybe a surface that's either too absorbent and not absorbent enough, drying, drying too quickly for you. Uh, so if you are experiencing some difference, then, then try something like Saunders. Uh, you, may, you may like it. And a lot of professional artists do swear by it around the world. So uh, yeah, Saunders Waterford, it's 300 grams, 140 pounds, and it's 50, uh, my paper size, as per usual, 15 by 11. Anyway, um, the... Initial very, very light wash has now dried. I'm now going in with, still sticking with my same brush, this Tintoretto mop brush, and just getting in the shapes as I see it. I'm con now, th at this stage, I am continually looking at the source photo for a little bit of inspiration and guidance. There is a kind of li little sort of hut there on that left-hand side. Um, it may completely disappear in the painting process, but I've just paid a little bit of homage to that with that little bit of light and the darkness uh, around it. So we're, we're, what we're doing here is trying to get in a feeling of depth. I'm using my fingers just to quickly lift off, get a diff some different surf, get some different um, edges going as well. A few hard edges, soft edges appearing. I'm just really gonna go like this across the scene as I say, trying to get a sense of depth, trying to get the underlying value and color, again, as regards color, mixing it up, warms and cools. A little bit of that lavender. 
add in some clear water as well. My water, my pot of water is over to the right hand side. Burnt sienna. Let me let me describe these colours as I go down. A bit of cadmium orange there, warm things up a bit. Uh, it's quite uh, quite extreme actually using a bit of cadmium orange. Anyway, so um, from the top is neutral tint, then burnt umber, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, spring green. It's a lovely green from Mark Jammer, that spring green. Um, maybe not too much of it in this one. Viridian green, cobalt green, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue. There we are, ultramarine blue there. And a nice warm blue. Alaris and crimson, cadmium red, light red or English oxide as Mark calls it, cadmium orange, cadmium yellow, bottom, bottom of that row. And then going along the, going along the bottom to the bottom right corner, there's a, a lavender there, quinacridone gold, and then a couple of gouaches, a, a sort of, a, like a yellow ochre gouache, and then a white gouache. Um, they're a little bit sort of dirted up by a previous painting. Um, anyway, back to this, a soft edge at the top, hard edge at the bottom. There's my slope on the right hand side, my, that little bit of a slope. So hopefully I've got the feeling of this sort of valley, the V shape of this valley yeah. with that background. Minimal sky, just honestly, just a really small space, this guy. It's all about the, the forest in that top part of the scene and the snow in the bottom part. Now I need to apply another layer, another transparent layer of color to the snow and keeping it fairly light in the middle ground now, starting with the middle ground. I'm, I'm as you can see, I'm right-handed. Uh, just uh, I need to be careful here not to smudge any of the work of my right hand, but keeping it like a, a fairly lightish wash there in the distance. Bit of light on the sort of ridge, if you like, of the, the far end of this snowy patch. That's where I've got a bit of contrast with the darker background of the forest behind. Um, I quite like the, the edge as well. No, no perfect edges. Now, as I'm coming towards the stream on the left-hand side, going a little bit darker, a bit bluer um, with the snow. Of course, this will dry a little bit lighter, so uh, you watercolour painters will know this. Um, the, the watercolour paints will dry a little bit lighter. Then uh, after after you first apply it, then compared to when you just applied them, um, just softening up that edge there a little bit, bit of lightness on this sort of middle ridge. There's the far ridge is light, this middle ridge is uh, lightish, and then um, fairly darker towards that um, that nearby edge there. So over to the right hand side and same format, same procedure, bit of light color to the snow, leaving some areas of the snow exposed. And again, just trying to think of the edges over here, using this mop brush with a, this bit of a point does give some interesting shapes. Now in the immediate foreground where there's foot, footprints or something there's been a bit of disturbance so I can go a little bit more haphazard with the brush and again just trying to create some shapes and those harder edges in this uh, nearby area and then on the left hand side using a lot of the side of the brush, uh, different angles there. Left, turn it left, turn it right, twisting it around, splaying out the hairs, just get that mixture, 
pick up a bit of clear water, drop that in there up to the edge of the, the this nearby edge where it hits the stream. That's going to give me that that hard edge uh, with the darker stream just beyond. So clear water here just in places. Touch with a brush, get it, get some interesting, interesting edges going, and merging those colours as well. So immediately, I can I can see a nice contrast now between warm and cool. There's that, that subtle yellows in the foreground, but then this massive blue. Just to fast forward there, past the drawing stage, this massive blue. You see how lighter it's gone. And then that warmth in the distance where you've got these winter trees and they're a little bit of subtle warmth in the distance. Now, rigger brush. This is my Lebenson rigger brush. And we've got so many different things going on here with the vertical trunks, branches in the distance. And I don't want to be too, the, the danger here is that you do, you could overdo all of these lines and marks and it just ends up being a total mess. Hopefully here with me, it, it won't do that, but I've got to be conscious of knowing when to stop. And like the background, I'm looking at the, at the corner of my eye, looking at the source photo just for a bit of inspiration and a mixture of these, the, the thicknesses of these marks as well. So th these are gonna be those sort of in the middle area to right at the back, as far away as we can see these tree trunks, that kind of mishmash of all of these different trees going on. So different thicknesses of line different a bit of variations of values as well and tone uh, and warm and cool um, blue pick up a bit of blue pick up a bit of a bit of burnt sienna dry brush marks as well lost and found so you've got a bit of a, a, a dotted line in there perhaps introduce a few different angles as well not purely perfectly vertical but a little bit of uh, an angle there on some of those those distant these distant distant twigs and branches going on and it doesn't matter if the brush is just losing some of the paint and I end up with just a very, very faint line. It might, it might just show through subtly in the end result, uh, quite, quite a pleasing variation of thicknesses of these vertical marks. So just using the tip of my brush here, sorry, I'm just uh, obscuring what you can see. I do apologize. Um, and then let's continue like this all over the all over that, that background area. There are of course some of these branches, there are some that go horizontally, some that point down, they're crossing each other as well. It's a natural forest, you know, it hasn't been it's not man-made, or at least I don't think it's man-made. And these trees over hundreds of years, or well, certainly decades, they're growing the way they they want to. And so they're sort of intermingling with each other and some of the some of the side limbs are dead and crossing and going down, falling down. Uh they you will also with some of the birch trees you will notice also uh, some of the sort of sprouts coming up from the the buttress roots of the tree as well that's another nice sort of 
aspect to these trees, the these twigs coming up, these smaller twigs coming up from the base of the tree, or younger little saplings just trying to, they've just germinated and they're just protruding through through the snow. More haphazard lines in that middle area. Just gradually getting a little bit darker than the initial wash. And as basically as I come forward, the values are going to be darker. The ratio of water to paint, there'd be less water and more paint. So it would be a little bit more opaque-ish with the application of the paint. And as I'm coming forwards, the, the background is dry or dryish, and I'm just coming forwards and going over the top with those, those darker shapes. Now, as I'm coming forward, the tree trunks are getting wider, thicker. So that rigger brush just wouldn't be appropriate as I come forward. So I'm going to go back to my, my sort of mop brush and So I've got a bit of gouache there, a bit of ultramarine blue, a bit of burnt sienna, ultramarine blue. And getting in this sort of thicker mix, a bit of gouache again, a bit of that sort of light yellow gouache. And now getting in some of these thicker trunks in this middle area. Not, not too perfect with the vertical, getting an ultra vertical, but a little bit of a bend. And then that all important edge at the bottom there, just kind of exaggerating the, where it's hitting that lighter ridge, just exaggerating that, that contrast. I've got the, I've got a, a round synthetic brush here again just to help this bit a bit wider than that the rigger brush back to back to my mop brush and this again fairly opaque thickish color bit of a fork in the branch, burnt umber, burnt sienna, ultra blue, gouache. Bring it down, crossing that lighter distant area of snow. And then the all important base where it's just, where that middle ridge there is just sort of hiding where a lot of these tree trunks are starting from. Back to the medium synthetic brush and not too much water, there's not, not a lot of water on this brush at this stage so the, the marks I'm making they're quite they're quite dry in a way. So gradually coming over from left to right with these middle tree trunks. And starting from the top, those side limbs going off at an angle and then coming down, getting those, those stoutish trunks. Bit of that light yellow Gouache. So we've got light trunks, some darker trunks. So 
so alternating between these two two brushes and the the mop brush is very adaptable it's a very flexible brush you you can as long as it's got a good point you you can be quite intricate with it and then with the with the uh, brushes with not too much paint on the brush you can actually get quite a good flat edge almost as good as a a flat brush a flat uh, yeah flat brush so um yeah, these, these Tintoretto's are really good value for money as well. And uh, I'm not affiliated to them in any way, but they are quite good value for money in my opinion. And being synthetic, they do last a good bit longer than natural, say, squirrel. I mean, I do, I would, I do prefer squirrel, but, and it's possibly tiny tiny little bit softer than the synthetic but as time goes on the synthetic synthetic brushes are getting very similar to a natural brush as regards their quality and their, their softness and um yeah they you know the, the actual end result anyway I'm, <laughs> I'm almost halfway over pretty sort of laborious trying to paint in these major tree trunks in that middle area When, when you look at the, when you're constantly looking at the photo, you just spot extra things. I suppose it's the trick is not to look too long at the source photo. There's, there's going to be a balance. The longer you look at the source photo, you're going to see more details and um, intricate little objects that you want to paint in. But the trick is just that balance of seeing enough of the source to, to give you guidance about what next do, you know, the shape of something, what next do you do. Um, now, almost halfway, almost halfway. Got to get a mixture of tree trucks just hitting that middle ground as well um, so we've got this feeling of depth with the base of the trunks being a little bit higher as we go into the distance just a little bit higher than the ones in front of them Bit of neutral tint now, go a bit darker. Always good to use the neutral, neutral tint is a, is a quick way of getting some instant darks. And it's not black, it, you've, you of course need to just add it to some other color, but to, to get, and there's, there's quite a few colors on that brush already, but just to get those quick darks in. Now I've got to be very careful here not to go too dark otherwise it would just it wouldn't look right. I mean a lot of the tree trunks here um, side branches limbs they're not black but they they are going a little bit darker as they come towards us. Right we're we're almost we're over halfway <laughs> so on the, on the journey over to the right uh, quite that this mit, this area here is probably the most complex of all just where it's sort of beyond the stream on that right I guess on that right hand side a little bit of viridian green a bit of spring green some of these tree trunks have got a bit of moss on them so let's try and indicate that so that these tree trunks here generally straight but got a little bit of a kink in them and they're connecting and, and touching 
on that right hand side and just to the left of the major tree on that right hand side. So, so I think generally that that middle to background area has turned out okay. Right, now, main tree, main birch, I'll call it birch tree. Try to get, first of all, the base colour of the bark. And then when this is still quite damp or moist, I'm going to go in with those lovely darker sort of horizontal bands. Um, so in my left hand, I'm holding my two, my two main brushes at the moment, the mop brush, Tintoretto mop brush, and this uh, small round synthetic brush, which I think is an Escoda Perla, size four or six, something like that. Anyway, it's quite useful to have the, the combination of the two and then holding it in my, holding both brushes in my left hand. I can uh, quickly pick them up, whatever brush I feel, whatever brush shape I feel is appropriate for, for that area. I think that cadmium, that cadmium orange sort of turned out all right, that sort of orangey glow in the middle there. It's nice contrast with the cooler blue of the snow in front of it. Now this, so this birch tree then has got these interesting marks down the sides, horizontally across. And there are little, little, as we come down, there's little patches of snow, what looks like snow, on the bark as well. So the, so the, the base layer of that tree was um, a gouache, very thick, very opaque -ish. And I'm now going in probably with, well, definitely thicker paint. And just trying to indicate those little marks. Some some of these marks are larger than others. Yes, yeah, it's, it's generally that this tree's got some markings down the left, markings down the right, and then just a few horizontals here and there. Just trying to indicate that. But that sort of... Uh, birch tree type appearance of the bark. Now this, this stream, let's start in the distance just as it goes around. And this stream is again, like the snow, it's a mixture of warms and cools. I detect a little bit of warmth in that middle area. So I picked up that quinacridone gold and Start with that sort of middle warmth in the distance there. Um, tiny bit cooler on the right hand side. Pick up a bit of ultramarine blue, although that's a warm blue, bit of ultramarine blue, and gradually come down. Then it goes a little bit, a little bit darker in this middle area here. Try and create, create that nice edge with the foreground snow as well, following that pencil line. And as I go over, go a little bit darker there. And then there is some lightness. We can just about see the bed of the river through the water. So back to that warm yellow ochre. Quinacrid and gold, um, that little bit of warmth where we can just see 
maybe it's a sort of sandy riverbed, something like that, but very soft. And then um, beyond that, we're going a bit cooler, darker, up to create a nice bit of contrast now with the edge of the snow on the, in this foreground. Again, follow that pencil line. I've probably exaggerated the nearby edge of the uh, stream there just a little bit. That's all right. And just create a few little indentations as we go up on the right hand side. Yeah, that sort of looks all right. We've got a, got a combination of variation of value in that stream. We've got a variation of values. We've got a variation of warms and cools, but that, that will do as a sort of base color of the stream. Now, small synthetic brush again. And now, trying to create these darker, these sort of darker recesses of uh, the snow, and we've got the, the darker side of the left-hand riverbank as well. Not too much water on the brush, burnt umber, neutral tint. As I said at the opening, this, this is probably one of the darkest areas of the, uh, of the scene. And again, thinking about edges as well, just flicking up the brush. Sorry, you can't uh, see too much what I'm doing but trying to create the, that on that left-hand side, that sort of little hollow where it's, I guess it, it could be part of the bank or it might be um, an actual uh, hole there on that left-hand side. But it's just some, some sort of interesting shape and a bit of contrast as well. Continue up this left hand side around that little patch of light snow going into the river and also uh, just creating with the flat edge of the brush, just creating some vertical marks in the reflections in the stream as well. Continue up, trying to create the, the feeling of the twisting and turning of this river as it recedes into the distance. We can just about make out how it then disappears, almost on that right-hand third, just disappears. I imagine it goes off round to the right or maybe maybe just, just straight ahead of us. A few, vertic few more little soft vertical marks, burnt umber, neutral tint. On that left-hand side, there's a few darker pebbles or stones in the river, on the riverbed, that are just showing through. Bit of lavender, ultramarine blue, and the mop brush. Not too much water. Nice and 
nice, nice and dry for a little bit of this, these soft reflections, these soft blue reflections on, on that stream. And then some of the reflections of the snow now. White gouache, not too much water. For me, it's all about the, with when applying gouache on, on top of areas that you've painted already, it's all about the consistency, the, uh, the again, the ratio of water to paint and making sure it's fairly sort of pasty, fairly thickish. Now I'm using a flat brush here to get that hard edge and then I'm just dragging it down vertically to create that sort of feeling of that reflection, that reflection coming down. Um, perhaps a little bit of the surface is showing through that, but on the whole, it's, this is fairly thick. It's, it is giving a good covering, a good covering over what was there before. And I use the fingertips as well, just to help things along and merge things around. Now back to my Lebensen rigger brush. And we have quite a few of these little twigs protruding out of the snow. Not too many of them, just a few on that far side and in a similar way at the base of the main tree on the right hand side. There's a few coming out there, but just a few little twigs giving the appearance of those little young saplings what could be a shrub material just coming out from coming out from the snow, fairly warmish colour. Connect with the it's an, another useful way of connecting these different areas with a, a vertical mark. There are a few little bits of I'm not sure if they're leaves or some other bits of bits of mud maybe in the foreground snow, but I just added a few marks in there. Um, and then these vertical shoots coming out from the buttress root of the this birch tree. a few little with that with this rigger brush I can get quite a, a fine line quite a thin line so it's quite useful that that tree now is quite dry and also the paint on my, on my rigger brush is quite dry as well but just gives a very subtle very faint thin line uh, burnt umber neutral tint and then continue on with those those lines a few horizontal darker lines on that on the right hand side of the snow um, a few more little marks here and there that's where that tree was that I decided not, not to include Now at the base of this tree, it's quite dark. Uh, not, not actually sure if it's mud or part of the tree, but I'm just using dry brush mark. Synth 
medium-sized synthetic brush, probably the best one for this, these sorts of shapes, these sorts of marks. And there's hardly any water on the brush. I'm just really almost like, I guess almost like a, a pastel painter would be now creating those marks across that scene, across that area. In the bottom right corner, there's quite a dark, dark mark where the snow has been, the, the snow has been disturbed. It's sort of exposing the, uh, the ground. So the, I guess the snow is not too thick here, maybe six inches thick, something like that. Not too thick. A few more of those lines those little twigs some of the more strategic ones I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> just do those a little bit more carefully more vertical lines as I've got this brush with that with that paint on it just a few more in the middle area. Down to the snow. You can see with my mixing areas, I've got generally in, in the middle mixing area, that's generally cooler colors, blues and so on. And then in the bottom one are generally my warms, so earthy reds and ochres, burnt sienna, that sort of thing. Few more crisscrossy type leaves, I don't to say leaves, uh, branches, twigs in the distance there. Right, lavender. with the mop brush, just a few darker areas of the snow in the foreground. Up around the tree, we need some there. And holding the brush like that and getting a hard edge along the bottom and a soft edge on the top, holding the brush like that with at a sort of 45 degree angle. Soften up the edge on the right hand side of the stream. There's a few shadows just coming down for some of those trees. Using lavender is quite a nice color for lighter objects in the shade. Does does give us it's quite a, a pleasing colour and value. Use the fingertip just to merge and soften up that edge right there in the middle. Now I do need to drop in some a little bit of highlighting of some snow. And my my white gouache on my palette has been, it's not too clean anymore. So I'm just gonna take some fresh gouache out of the tube with a, this is a rosemary synthetic brush, quite, quite a good point to it and it was a damp, it is, it was a damp brush. 
So dipping it in this tube, picking out some fresh white gouache. And I'll just add a little bit of highlight where, where some snow has accumulated in the, in the fork of a tree where a sideling comes out or a little bit along a side limb as well. Right in the middle of the scene, there's, there's quite a few branches that are curving over. Maybe the weight of the snow is just, just bending those branches down a little bit. A few little, little dabs of snow, mainly on those middle trees. In that middle area, there's a there's a few little lighter areas of snow. We can maybe it's almost like a little patch or like a gap through the trees, and you can see something going on there. Um, now, while I've got this brush, if I think if I I think if I add in a few little horizontal marks like this, it just suggests more the feeling of water and a little bit of movement in that reflection in the water. Just a few of those, a few of those horizontal lines with a dr very dry brush and quite a pointy brush as well. A few more little dabs of snow on that left hand side. And what I'll do very shortly is I'll do a little debrief of my end painting for you and uh, give you my thoughts on how things went when everything has been allowed to dry. Also remember, not necessarily with white gouache, but with gouache, it's generally going to dry darker, whereas watercolor paint will dry lighter. With gouache is the opposite. So as I say, don't need to bother with pure white permanent white gouache, but um, for example, that light yellow I was using does, does dry a little bit darker. And there we are, the painting done. Yeah, so, so uh, just give me a few seconds and I'll come back to you with my, my little critique. The Serra de Estrella mountains then in Portugal. I think they're sort of in the middle of Portugal, but unusual snowy scene. And trying to depict, well, the colour of snow. Uh, I think that turned out all right. The, the mixture of the, the values we've got, the warms and cools, a little bit of yellow in there, a uh, bit of warmth happening in that uh, middle area the coolness here and also edges, think about edges. So that soft, soft edges there, hard edge there, hard edge where we're coming right up against the, the darkness of the stream as well, that turned out okay. The forest, trying to get, trying to create the impression of the, the depth of the forest going into the distance and then all of these, um, trees in the middle then coming towards us. I think that I got the got that all right, not too many. Um, maybe in some place it might be just a little bit overdone, but I quite like the effect of all of those twigs and the fact that we've got these branches and trunks and we've got a mixture of thicknesses of those tree trunks and, and also colours as well, some warm and cool, darker ones here as well. Um, trying to make all these trees look natural. I mean, these, these branches there, the, 
they, they point up, they point down, they're crossing each other um, all over the place. So trying to create that sort of confusion of all of those, those, those different shapes there. And also using um, a lot of dry brush as well. Can I see, can I show you a dry brush mark? Well, there's some dry brush marks there, dry brush mark there, there. Um, quite effective and also perhaps that dry brush, it just gives you a the, the appearance of a little, maybe a little bit of snow or frost on that brush as well. And it, it's helped by having um, just the right bit of roughness on your paper surface as well to get that kind of dry brush mark. Yeah, so hopefully I got the feeling of depth there. Didn't bother, there was that cabin on the left-hand side um, that really sort of, it's, it, that's too much detail raised. Really. It's, it's way off there in the distance. The stream, the winter stream. Yeah, I think that turned out all right. I quite like the way that the the reflections, the lighter reflections turned out. And that darker side to that, um, that far side as well um, turned out all right. And also the feeling of maybe the feeling of some sort of darker pebbles and things lying there on the surface. Well, I hope you like that, the a snowy scene, the Serra d'Australia in Port, Portugal. Uh, catch up with you on the next video. Bye-bye.